All right, so I'm gonna show you how you can get a Samba file server, a MB media server, and um, and a Google Cloud print server on your Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we need to do is install Raspbian. We're getting the Raspberry Pi imager for Mac OS from their official website. We can just download this, and since I'm on Mac, I have to after installation, I have to extract the DMG and then move it over to my applications folder. And then once that's done, I can just use Alfred to bring it up. I will choose the OS, which is Raspbian, and then I'm going to choose my SD card that I have plugged in. Um, and then I'll click right. That'll take a little bit of time. I just need to enter my password and then we should be good to go. After that's finished, uh, actually burning onto the SD card, I can unplug it. So what I ended up having to do was unplug my SD card and then replug it back in so I could see the boot um, uh, file directory. Um, at this point, we actually need to make a file called SSH and then put that into the boot sector of our SD card. So what I did was I went, I changed directory to my desktop and then used the touch command to create an SSH file. And then I just drag that into the boot. Um, after that's done, you're basically good for the SD card. We can eject it and then plug it into our Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be connecting my Raspberry Pi to Ethernet because um, we're going to need an easy way to SSH into it. And yeah, so I'm going into my gateway and I'm seeing that it my Pi has the IP address 10.0.0.14. So I will SSH to that uh, using the Pi user. I'll say yes to the fingerprint and the default password is going to be raspberry. So before updating, I'm gonna configure my Raspberry Pi to do certain things. So we can do that with sudo raspberry config. We're gonna change the default user uh, the default password, first of all, for the Pi user. And then we're going to go over to the boot options and say that we want to auto log into the desktop. Next, we're going to go to interfacing and enable SSH and v um, VNC. SSH is already enabled by default because we had the SSH file in the boot directory. But now we're going to um, enable VNC. After that's done, I'm just going to uh, expand the file system to use uh, to let the Raspberry Pi use all the space on the SD card because by default it doesn't do that. I'm not sure why. And that's really about it. We can reboot now. And then after a bit, um, we can log back in to the Pi. And now we can use our new password that we created, if you did. And now we can get our updates out of the way. So we'll just run sudo apt update. And then after that's done, we can run a sudo apt upgrade. So the first step is installing our file server. And we're, since we're using the Samba file server, we will we're going to need two packages. The first is going to be just called Samba, and the second one will be called Samba Common Bin. We're going to say yes to this. Um, so I'm going to be using Pi My Life Up's tutorial on how to make a Samba server. I'm also going to use another tutorial that will let us auto mount a certain drive to a certain directory because apparently Pi My Life Up's tutorial did not include that. And um, that feature is actually kind of important. So first what we're going to do is create a share directory in our uh, whatever directory we're in. So for me it would be slash home slash pi slash share. And then I'm going to plug in my terabyte and run a sudo fdisk-l command to see the terabyte that I just plugged in. We'll see that it's dev sda1 and dev sda5. I'm not sure why the type for dev sda1 is like that, so I'm just going to be using dev sda5. Mount dev sda5 to our share directory as sudo. And I actually get an error when doing this. I'm not sure what the error is, but I fixed it by just doing uh, doing a sudo umount command on dev sda5 and then rerunning the command from above. And that worked. Uh, now if we go into share, we can see all the contents of the drive. I have three folders in it and we can see a bunch of directories. And now what we need to do is actually um, make it so that we can automatically mount 
our drive to that directory every time the computer boots up. So what we're going to do is use nano uh, to edit the fstab file in our ATC directory as a sudo. We're going to go all the way to the bottom and we're going to need to first put in the um, partition of the drive that we want to mount which will be dev sda5 and then the location we want it to mount it to which is going to be our slash home slash pi slash share directory we'll have auto no a time comma and then no fail and then we'll have zero and then zero well, we can write our changes with control o enter and then control x so at this point, we also need to make a configuration in our Samba configuration file for our actual share. So we're going to need to use uh, sudo nano again, but instead of our fstep file, we're going to go into slash etc slash smb slash or slash etc slash samba slash smb.conf to edit the configuration file. We're going to go all the way to the bottom. It's a pretty big file, so it'll take a little bit. And in brackets, what we're going to do is name our share something. I named mine pi terabyte. And under this, we're going to have some options. So for the path, I set it to slash home slash pi slash share because that's where we're ultimately going to be mounting to. And then we're going to set writable to yes. And then we're going to have a create mask of 077, which is just a permission. We're also going to do that to the directory mask. And we're going to say, and we're going to set public equal to no, which basically means that you need to be a registered user to use our server. So we can write our changes with control O, uh, enter, and then control X. So now what we need to do is actually add a verified Samba user. I'm going to be using SMB password dash A on my Pi user. We, can, we have to make a new Samba password, or new SMB password, so I'll do that here. Remember, it's a sudo command, so don't forget to put sudo at the beginning. And at this point, we just need to restart the Samba service, so we can do that with sudo systemctl restart smbd. Now we can go to Finder. Uh, on Mac, we can go to Finder, go to Go at the top left, and then go to Connect Server, or you could just do Command-K. Um, I have this from my previous Samba server, but right now the IP on my server is .14 instead of .20, so I'll put that. I'm going to connect, and then we can use our Pi user that we added, and then you, uh, then enter the password for the Pi user. And I'm going to choose to mount my Pi terabyte drive, or not drive, directory. So now we can see that we have the IP of my Pi here. I can click on it and we can go to the user file, but uh, we can see that we have terabyte here and that holds all our content and it's accessible from my Mac now. We can do this on Windows as well. It, right now I don't have access to a Windows laptop to show you guys how to do it. so. Um, but the Pi My Life Up tutorial down, uh, that's linked down below does have um, a tutorial on how to view it from Windows. So the next thing we're going to do is install an MB server. An MB server is just a me uh, that's what we're going to be using for our media server. And I'm going to go down to uh, I'm going to go to the Linux server um, portion of their website and download the ARM seven ARM v seven version. I'm going to copy the link for that and then go onto my Pi, cd into the downloads directory, and then use the wget, uh, wget command to actually download the file. And after that's done, we can run the dpackage command with the dash i flag and the file name to actually run it. But we need sudo for this, as I forgot here. So we're just going to need to do sudo dpackage dash i and then mb server. That'll install. Uh, I'm going to edit my bookmark because I had this to 20.8096 and it should be .14.8096. Uh, this, this is how you access your Pi. You would do the IP of your Pi and then colon for port and 8096. So 
we have our, uh, our MB is finished installing, so now we can click this bookmark and it'll bring us to our MB server. This is hosted from our Pi, and we just need to do some quick, uh, quick start options. I'll fly through these. You don't really, this is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, now we're at the stage where we can um, add my med uh, add media libraries. A media library is just basically organizing your content. So we can choose content type here. Um, for the first one, I'll do movies, and then we can choose a certain folder. What I want to do is if we want to see more options, we do um, we enter the directory we want to look into, and then we use this magnifying glass, and that'll let us look into it. So I chose the Shreeward directory, went into the torrents, the media, and then finally, after it loaded, I chose the movies directory. Um, I clicked OK here, and then I did basically the same for um, my TV shows directory. So after adding both media libraries, uh, I can sign in using my uh, password for MB that I set up at the beginning and we can see that we have uh, two sections for my media with um, movies and TV shows. Right now none of the thumbnails are showing up because it's gathering all the metadata. That takes a little bit because my Pi isn't too powerful and my internet's also kind of crap, but that'll load and I'd give it like, I don't know, 10 to 20 minutes and then come back to it. So now that the media server is out of the way, we can install our um, print server stuff. Well, I'm going to be using the HP lip package because I'm using an HP printer and then also using the cups server, which is just a print server. I'll install those. That'll take a little bit of time. And then in the meantime, I'm going to open up a Chrome instance and actually sign into my Google account. Uh, this is important because eventually I'm going to share, uh, log into Google Cloud Print with this account, and it also makes it um, also makes sharing printers uh, very easy. So after HPLIP and Cups are finished installing, I ran the HP setup -i command for interactive mode. I found that the default option was zero for USB, so I selected that. It found my HP printer. Uh, found my HP printer. Um, I just, you can do whatever for these options. I kind of just left them as default. So then after that, we can navigate to, uh, on Chromium, we can go to Chrome colon slash slash devices. We can add a printer. I chose to do my printer and then not automatically register new printers. Then I did add printer and then we can go to manage our printers. Now at this point we have full control. We can uh, share this to other, um, we can share this to other users and at this point we're basically done.